Hello there, Scott Zambelli with Odd Musings, and I'm here with Michael Stackpole. Howdy. Which is, what? I said howdy. Oh, I thought you said Adam, Michael. No, oh, no, no. I said the wrong name. <laughs> oh my God, that's my other identity. <laughs> I, I totally screwed that up. Yeah. Awesome. Not <laughs> I'm quite like, that I, old, but yeah. <laughs> this is Michael Stackpole, and um, as a Star Wars fan myself and many of our listeners, um, I know you through the X-Wing series that you right. wrote for Star Wars, along with I, Jedi. Um, uh, another great book that I, I love were the short stories. You did uh, Tales from the Empire. Right, right. Yeah, in there, I had stuff yeah, in there, there and, and, and Tales uh, from the Rebellion or yeah, the yeah, Republic. Yeah, that's New right. Republic. Uh, so a lot of great books. And uh, in addition to Star Wars, though, you, you well, Battletech, which was a, mm-hmm. a huge, uh, I was a huge fan of growing up. Um, and uh, you did a World of uh, Warcraft book. Right. And then you have your own series as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'll pretty much write anything anyone will pay me for. <laughs> So. Have money, will write. Absolutely, that's, that's how it works. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Now, um, also as a Star Wars fan, uh, you were a huge part of the expanded universe right. for for me for me uh, reading all through the '90s. And and uh, what what do you have any favorite books that you've written or favorite characters? Who's your favorite character to write in the Star Wars universe? I mean, it's really, that's kind of tough because one of the cool things about writing Wedge is, you know, I had to take this character who we see in a handful of scenes, and he's supposed to be a really hot pilot. He's got leadership capability, and he's Luke's best friend, and trying to meld all that together to make a viable character was, that was a big challenge, And I, but I really enjoyed writing him because of that. You know, to, to have the, because uh, he's not dour, he's not down, not a Jedi, doesn't have those problems to deal with. But he's got responsibility for all these other people and everything, so that's right. it made him fairly complex. And so I enjoyed it, doing him. And then, um, you know, Corrin. I, I really enjoyed writing Corrin. Um, obviously, I Jedi is very much of his story, and so those two were the, the ones I think that I had the most fun with. Awesome, yeah. And, and Corrin Horn, he's really, a, you know, I remember during that time he was a, a fan favorite for a lot of people for the uh, the non movie characters that right. were out right. at that right. time. Um, so in, in addition to that, um, we, we had a brief conversation yesterday about, um, you know, when you're writing, uh, when you're doing something like a Star Wars, there's words that you'll use that, uh, whether you, even yourself or fans, we don't know how to pronounce. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And in, in particular, I always say Yazan Bong. Right, right. Which, which, and uh, it was Yuzan Bong. Was Yuzan how we always, Bong. Yeah, so that was, you know. Yeah. And, and, and that, is one of the, that is one of the very funny things, as I was telling you yesterday. The producers for the audiobooks would call up and they would have a list of 25, 30 words that they wanted to have pronounced. And half the time I'd just say, I don't know, I've never said it out loud, I've merely <laughs> typed it. So, you know, made it a macro and just keep hitting it. Did you ever have so, a moment like... Uh, hey guys, just as a oh. reminder, I have... <laughs> it's okay. You know, they, everybody's got their different opinions of, of things and it's real fun to, to watch how people, the impressions that they've got things that they remember you know when you're writing the stories you're never you never quite know what's going to catch fire with people whether it's you know the color of their eyes being special or some little quip that they said Mm -hmm. um i know that i know aaron alston uh used to just light up and love when people would say yub yub commander i mean you know because that was just such an integral part of the race squadron books you know that was the catchphrase that he was remembered for and so and and that was very very cool and so it's it's really you know, theoreticians, literary right. theoreticians will talk about how writers only contribute half of what goes into any story, that the reader brings the rest. And yeah. so it's often a revelation for us just to see what, again, caught fire for some people. Right. Yeah. And even myself, when I when I do artwork, there, there, oh, sure. there are things that I'll do where I think, oh, this is going to be amazing. And the fans just blow by it. Right. And then something I didn't even think they would care about. They're oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah. So I'm sure you get a lot of that too. Yeah, well I was I actually was surprised at how popular Tycho became. Mm. I mean I really liked him and in, in, in the background I put him in was a you know, or the situation I left him in was very much of a uh, it was accurate for World War Two. That if you were a pilot shot down over Europe and you escaped with the help of the underground, right. they wouldn't let you fly again. Because they were afraid if you got shot down and captured again, you'd give up the people who had helped you before. Ah. And yet you've got all these guys who were very loyal and really wanted to help fight the Nazis, and they weren't able to do that. And that was a chunk of the dynamic that I wanted for Tycho, mm-hmm. and then kind of amped it up because they weren't sure if he was, you know, a traitor or not. Right. You know, and so it, it uh, but, you know, he that was sort of a, a really sideline minor story, and yet 
people really, uh, really just embraced him as a character, and you just never expect it, and there it is. Now, now, being a writer, you're, you're a veteran writer now, mm -hmm. if you had a time machine to go back to yourself, what, what advice would you have given yourself to, to navigate this, this world of being an author in a, especially like franchises like sure. Battletech and Star Wars and, and, and things like that, what, what's the best advice you would give yourself? Um, well, that's really, it, it, it's kind of funny in, in two ways. Um, one, uh, here at Phoenix Comic Con and other conventions, um, I put together a series of writers' workshops where I teach a bunch of them. I bring guys like Tim Zahn and Tom Levine, other writers, to go ahead and, and, and teach classes as well to provide exactly that sort of information. So, so you know, I, if I could go back in a time machine, it would be, you know, with, with, with uh, you know, video of these classes and say, here, kid, watch these. You know, because it's all stuff that you learn as you're coming up. Yes. But the ultimate advice, especially if you're going to write, I mean, for anybody that wants to write in a franchise universe, the two things you have to know are this. One, you have to write your own book first. Um, if you write fanfic in a, in, a, uh, in a franchise universe, that's fine, it's a great way to practice, but there are things you will never learn to do. You'll never learn to create worlds because they've been created for you. You'll never have to build characters because they've already been built for you. So, and, and characterization skills, and especially in science fiction, world building skills are really, really important. I mean, it's like, you know, imagine somebody in the NBA who can't shoot a three-pointer and can't dribble. Um, you know, and that would so, be me. Well, there you go. <laughs> yes, all of us happen to be the rather height challenged, but uh, I keep telling my mother I could have been an NBA star if she wasn't smoking. But uh, uh, so you know, those are things that that you need to do. And the second thing is, uh, and this uh, a lot of veteran writers run afoul of this when they've written their own material and go over to franchise universe. When you're writing in a franchise universe, you have to prove to the reader you know and love that world as much or more than they do. Right. Because if you break their hearts, they will never forgive you. <laughs> and, and, and it can be kind of nasty. Right. Uh, and, and so you really have to show them you love this world, you appreciate it, and, and, and it's not beneath you to write this stuff. Yeah, I think that's a very important point, too, that we see even in, in movies where they'll take an existing franchise and, and where then a fan base will, will feel disassociated or sure, disowned sure. because they wanted to make it their own. Right, right. And like you said, you, you can still put your voice into it mm -hmm. and your style, but you gotta show right. you understand this universe for that fan base to really accept it. Absolutely, I mean, you know, if you look at the X-Wing books as an example, you know, Corrin Horn is the character that I created, a lot of the ancillary characters I created, those are the ones that I got to play with and, and mold because there wasn't anything else that was there. By the same token, you know, I, I, Wedge was a major character. I had to be very respectful of who he was in the universe and, and logically who he would be as an individual, right. which is pretty much what all of us in watching those films had projected him into. Right, yeah, he was you the non-force user who, exactly. who survived all the battles. Right, and right. that's who we, you know, we could associate that with us. Yep, yep. Now, now for those watching, um, you mentioned your writer workshops and stuff. Mm -hmm. Is there a way, how do they look that up to find out to be part of this when, when you're at a convention in their town? Um, usually the, uh, well, the places where I teach, um, I teach at DragonCon, uh, there we have a 20-hour program uh, with a lot of different writers uh, coming in and, and contributing. Um, and so it would just be check with the convention. If I'm there, chances are at any convention I'll run some sort of a writer's workshop. Okay. Um, there's another convention whose name uh, has just slipped out of my brain uh, in North Carolina. All right, guys, just July. as a reminder, we are working on the All right, here we go. All right. So, so you, whatever show you're at, you're probably going to be doing these workshops. Probably do some sort of workshops okay. uh, of, of some stripe. Um, and uh, Origins, the uh, gaming convention mid June in Columbus. So Atlanta, Columbus. Nice. Um, so if I'm at a show, you know, you can look for that. And, and on your website, so you keep your schedules on there? Uh, you know, I have to start <laughs> updating that. For a while, I wouldn't put my schedule on my website just because that tells people I'm away from the house. <laughs> um, you know, so that, yeah. you know, that's, that's true uh, yeah, you don't really want to be encouraging uh, people to, to, to and, and, you know, yeah. So, right. you know. so how do people follow you online? Um, the best way to follow me is probably uh, uh, at Mike Stackpole on, my twi on Twitter. Okay. Just look me up on Twitter. Uh, what I tend to do there is most mornings um, 
uh, I'll tweet out a bunch of links to inter interesting articles about writing or story ideas I think with Spark writers or you know normal you know gaming geek and, and nerd stuff uh, that uh, that we all like. Awesome. So, yeah, yeah. Great. Well, I want to thank you for being part of this and uh, joining us on Odd Musings. And you can tune in every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time or go to oddmusings.com and you can replay past episodes too. Thank you Great. so much. You are more than welcome. Thank Take you. care. Yep. Bye.